Hi de hi, ho de ho. How's everyone doing? Uh, I'm taking a walk through the area known as Kensington, Kensington, or Kensington Gore as it's known as, because the, in this area that I will be showing you today, it was bought by the Royals in 1852. Uh, previous to that, it had the Gore Estate here, and then a lot of redevelopment took place from 1852 when the Royals or Prince Albert bought this this area because he loved the the theatres, the libraries, and um, and the schools all around here. So he ended up buying it, asking his royal commissioners to buy this area. Now, I'm going to start off with a specific park, which is just in front of us here, and I'll just turn the camera around. So this, in the distance, which I, hopefully I can zoom in, let's do that again. Wonderful is Hyde Park. It's 350 acres and it used to join up to Kensington Gardens which if we turn around here in the distance of the other side of this uh, road junction which um, once we get up to uh, I could explain a little bit better. Once we go past this junction it then becomes Kensington Gardens. Now Kensington Gardens and High Park used to be uh, joint as one park and then Queen Charlotte in the 1700s decided to build herself, make herself two lakes known as the Long, River, the Long Lake and also the Serpentine Lake. And uh, this is what separates the two, this very road that we'll be coming up to in a second. But it's a wonderful day, it's, uh, it's literally about 18 degrees today in February, it should be snowing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy really, I mean I've got my jacket on today because you never know, can end up getting a bit chilly but uh, yeah I'm just going to show you just briefly around here. So this is the road network that splits the two. So to our right, we've got Hyde Park. And to our left, you've got Kensington Gardens, which is 270 acres, and you've got Hyde Park, which is 350. The two parks combined make up London's largest, well, central London's largest park. In, in terms of the whole of London, the largest park is Richmond Park. Now we're just going to cross the road and we're going to be getting onto the main road known as the Kensington Gore Road. Yeah, I hope you're all doing good today. It's a beautiful day for having a walk about and uh, enjoying the sights. I hope you're enjoying watching them with me. So, on the corner there, you can see two statues. The gentleman to the left is Ernest Shackleton and he was uh, an, an explorer. Like the gentleman to, to the right of us here, um, he, ex well, he, did, he did three expeditions to Antarctica and uh, the, the gentleman on the right is Do David Livingstone and he was an explorer and he, he, when he explored, he explored the River Nile and he checked out all the different sources of the Nile and uh, London cabbies actually call this part of Kensington Gore hot and cold corner because obviously one explorer went to Antarctica which is absolutely freezing and the other explorer went to the uh, the Nile, which you can imagine was quite hot. <laughs> but anyway, we continue on. Um, I just want to briefly show you down this road as well, down that ferry street, it's called Exhibi Exhibition Road. You've got the Science Museum there, and you've also got the um, Natural History Museum, along with the Victorian Albert Museum.
And this is why Prince Albert loved this area, because of the many museums, um, many shops, libraries, and also schools. Will we continue on? Now, another absolute delight is this old milestone. Built in 1911, there was actually 15 of these and they go in a westward direction. One actually goes eastwards, it's the one at High Park Corner. Uh, but the rest of them go to uh, all the way to Bath Road, which is in Heathrow. And um, th this is made of steel, which I can feel here, which I can uh, tell you it is. And um, the A4 used to actually come through here, uh, which is no, as I've, the video is about, the Kensington Gore area. But then, it, then the A4 got moved to where Cromwell Road is in Brompton Road, where the uh, Harrods is and uh, South Kensington. Uh, so these are like no longer used, but this was like to help motorised traffic to go through and, and um, just basically a map really for, for road users to look out for. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I think the next one along is the uh, outside the Milestone Hotel and obviously Hotel why it was called the Milestone gives a clue in why, why it was because he had the Milestone uh, tablet outside just directly outside the front of the hotel so fantastic. Now the the great thing about the area of Kensington okay so all the buildings that you'll see today are the original buildings that were built there in the first place. Um, the, as I say, the Victorians did redevelop it. But during the Second World War, a uh, majority of the German bombing took place in the east of London because it was a lot easier for the Germans to lay their bombs and land their bombs in the east of London where the River Thames was at its widest and then they could fly back out again. The more west they went, the, the, the more chance they had been hit on the way back out. But uh, we're just going to turn the camera around and I'm just going to show you these uh, wonderful uh, uh, apartment blocks. So, there you go. So these are actually 19th century mansion blocks. So you've got the Albert Hall mansion, you've got the Prince's Gate Court. Uh, they were actually built for the, the, the higher person of society, um, the upper class person. But when they were first built, most people thought that apartments were for people generally, well, they generally viewed people who lived in apartments to be of the lower class. But uh, once they went into the rooms, they quickly changed their minds because some of the, the actual uh, rooms and, the, and uh, apartments here are like big houses, basically. For the size of my house. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so what a marvellous place. Yeah, it goes all the way around the back there. And these were actually designed by a gentleman called Richard Norman. And, uh, and he received a job to do the job in uh, 1878. And right next door to it, you have, not a bus, <laughs> you have the uh, Royal Albert Hall. It was actually opened in 1871. Uh, just after Prince Albert's death, uh, Queen Victoria was actually going to open it herself, but she was still so distraught and in mourning still about her husband's death that she got her son, the, the Prince of Wales, Prince Edward, to open it. And uh, when he opened it, when he cut the rhythm, he said, the Queen declares this hall now open. Now, they had a problem when they first opened it and, and performers from music, theatre and so forth were performing in there because it was the only place you could hear your own voice twice and uh, the echoing was so loud and big that uh, they had to find a solution and finally they did. They fitted these things called 
fiberglass diffusing discs and uh, this quelled the echo in and uh, sorted out the problem. But uh, it also boasts the largest uh, amount of pipe organs in any one building. It has uh, up to 10,000 pipe organs, and up, which weigh up to in total 150 tons. And uh, one last fact, uh, which is, is a lot more in there, but if you was a music artist uh, and you was asked to perform here, it's uh, a great honor to do so. And uh, in 1969, the Beatles and the uh, Rolling Stones performed uh, on the same night, on the same gig, for the one and only time. But we move on. And they have, um, yeah, as I say, they have all concerts in here. They have a Circus du Soleil also, and uh, yeah, it's still going strong. Now we're just going into what is known as Kensington Gardens. And as you can see, this marvellous, marvellous statue here in the distance. You can see it's known as the Prince Albert Memorial. It took 10 years to build and this was built to commemorate Prince Albert's life and the, his passions and interests. And um, as I say, it took 10 years to build. It cost £120,000, uh, which in today's money is about £10 million. But uh, we're just going to get up nice and close to it. It was built by uh, Sir George Gilbert Scott. Now, funny enough, when the memorial was built, it was built in 1872. But the actual golden statue of Albert that's placed in the middle there wasn't placed in, on that until three years afterwards. So <laughs> it must have took a, a little bit longer, and obviously it did, but. Uh, it must have uh, been a lot of detail put into it, which it certainly has done. The closer you get to it, it's uh, remarkable. And I'm just going to show you, because this memorial is also based on Prince Albert's passions and interests, especially of the Great Exhibition. And the uh, Great Exhibition, which took place over a four-month period in Hyde Park, was... Uh, was a four month uh, sh exhibition for people which 60 million people came to visit and it was to show off Victorian life and infrastructure and uh, a new dawn in the industrial age. So this is uh, the corner of this memorial, you've got the, the Europe here. These would have been all passions and interests of the great exhibition that he would have shown. It just, it just doesn't matter what angle you come to really, it's quite remarkable. And then we're going to come to the next one now. <laughs> And then, and the next one, what's the next one? It's the America. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Yeah. Got the bias in there. So yeah, just a few facts about the great exhibition that took place in 1850 before uh, Albert actually bought the area of Kensington Gorilla. There was an enormous fountain and I'll just put, post a few uh, pictures up of the great exhibition and paintings that were taking place of when, it, when the exhibition took place. Uh, it had a, a large fountain in the middle of the exhibition which stood 8.2 metres high you had over 100,000 objects on display. You also had uh, the number of days the exhibition was open, well, it was four months, uh, and there was 300,000 panes of glass. 
that was used, um, which the actual arena was actually called the Crystal Palace. And they used 300,000 pieces of glass for that. And the total profit of the event was 186,000, which is uh, incredible. <laughs> I can't imagine what it is today in today's money. But yeah, and the last one we saw there, I believe was the Africas. Yes, the Africas. Yeah, it's incredible. So, we are uh, gonna continue on. And uh, we're gonna be continuing westwards along the Kensington Gore area. absolutely gorgeous here and I'm just going to show you this view what I'm seeing at the moment look at that that is incredible the Royal Albert Hall there you've got the apartments in the back uh, so at the moment we're in the Kensington Gardens as I've mentioned a number of times and uh, there's a, also an enormous lake in the middle of uh, Kensington Gardens that was actually it's a man-made lake, and that was first filled in 1728. You've also got a statue of Peter Pan inside uh, Kensington Gardens. And the reason for that is, is because the opening scenes of Peter Pan is of Kensington Gardens and um, Kensington Palace. And that was the, using the opening scenes, and this is the reason why they've got a statue there in the in the uh the park so i'm just walking to my next point uh which i'm sure you'll like um but as i'm walking along here i've just come across these beautiful flowers that are blooming um springtime or coming up to springtime is my favorite time of the year and just look how wonderful these flowers look it's been a long time since i've seen these kind of flowers it's a long winter in england and uh yeah, let's show you some fantastic uh, blooming flowers that are just coming up for spring. It's wonderful. Wonderful. I wish I could um, walk up today and get a bit closer to them, but uh, it's quite hard to know where the entrances and exits are to the park. Where some gates are closed and some gates are not. You can get the idea. This is what you call the old uh, Boris bikes. And uh, Boris Johnson brought them in. And uh, their rental bikes is another one. I think she's running me over. Um, but yeah, Boris Johnson brought them in, our ex Prime Minister. And uh, <laughs> they are rental bikes. You can think use cards and stuff. They're very popular still. Very popular still. I mean, he, he bought that in when he was the, uh, the mayor of London. So God knows how long ago that was. Must be at least, I don't know, about, probably about eight, eight, ten years ago. Could be wrong, but uh, there or thereabouts. Okay, so the last place I wanted to show you is this fantastic green hut shelter, uh, known as a cabbie shelter. Uh, up to 61 of these were built in the 1870s uh, by the Earl of Shaftesbury. He wanted to help out cab drivers who wanted to, uh, well, he basically wanted to be, well, at that time they were known as handsome cabs, with the horse drawn and carriages. And he wanted to help out cab drivers to help them avoid the temptation of, uh, <laughs> of being in the pubs and so he, put, he built 61 shelters so they could have warm uh, drink and warm food inside these shelters. Now there's only 13 of these shelters left and only cab drivers are allowed to stay inside but uh, they, uh, they do take away food to members of the public and uh, this for me is my most favourite green hut because you get the uh, 
lovely lady that will serve um, fantastic, well, some of the best tea and coffee in London. Uh, just a Just pack of cheese and onion, please. Two seventy. Thank you, my love. And that's for you as well. Very okay, you. now you're more than welcome. Have a good day, Luba. Good Thank you. Bye. Bye. So there you have it, guys. We've just got a lovely cup of tea uh, off the lovely Luba, off the cabman shelter on Kensington Road. As I say, I highly recommend you go and visit. And uh, I best get back to work, working as a cab driver. And uh, hope you have a great day and uh, bye the buyers. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you did, if you could press the like and subscribe button below, I'll be extremely grateful. Thanks for watching.